Hi, and welcome back. So over the past bunch of videos, we've been going over electron configurations for all these different elements on the periodic table. And I think this is now the 11th video, and we've figured out that pretty much everything above this line, we should be somewhat, or we should be pretty confident in doing electron configurations for, for anything above this line. And keep in mind that this even includes elements pretty much around here, so I'll, I'll block off these elements. And these elements all have got electrons in these f orbitals, right? So if I were to say that this is where essentially our f block fits into our periodic table, so this is our, so we can see that this down here, this is our, this is our f block, this is our f block. I think I might be might be making the, uh, might be drawing too much. I've actually got, sorry if I sound a bit nasally, I've actually got a bit of a cold right now. But uh, anyway, so we can pretty much say that we can get anything above this line. So pretty much anything besides the F block. We have now got a pretty good system for figuring out the electron configurations. And hopefully you feel confident enough to do electron configurations for, for, any element, including our two exceptions that we had, which our two exceptions above that line were copper and chromium. And if you don't, I'd say don't worry. We're going to have a bunch of videos. Uh, uh, I'm going to start put, making a bunch of videos where we just do examples of figuring out electron configurations. And we'll use what we learned in the last video, which was the nearest noble gas electron configuration. Uh, we'll use that a bit in this video, too. But um, what we're going to essentially be doing in this video is we're going to concentrate on the F block. And one thing I kind of want to say about it before we get started is that if you're in a general chemistry one class, you might need to know a little bit about electron configurations for the F block, and you might need to know a very little bit maybe about ions in the F block, or, or maybe not ions so much as... Uh, as uh, isotopes, you might be giving given an isotope example from the F block, and probably and you know figuring out the atomic mass of an isotope in the F block. It's just like figuring out the atomic mass of of any element that you would have based on the different isotopes that you have, and and uh, hopefully you feel confident confident enough to do that. I'll, I'm going to make a few more examples of. Of, uh, of figuring out isotopes, so so they'll they'll give you a bit more practice for that too. But essentially, we're not really going to in a general chemistry course, at least not in a general chemistry one course, really worry so much about this F block down here. So I'm going to give you sort of a very brief overview of electron configurations in this F block sort of as a standpoint to show you that there are a lot of exceptions to any rule that we could come up with for figuring out what our electron configurations are uh, are down here in the F block. Uh, but, you know, you shouldn't really worry about doing F block electron configurations so much. And anyway, with that said, let's actually get started. So I'm actually going to clear off that layer. And let me actually just start out. I'm actually just going to outline all of the elements that are in this F block that or actually, you know what, let's, I'm not going to do that. Sorry, I'm changing my mind. Let's first start off with, so we learned in the last video, we learned our nearest noble gas electron configuration. And let's just figure out, based on our past couple of rules that we've, that we've, uh, that we've been working with, what exactly, what electron configuration we could expect for, let's say, let, let me choose something that's easy to pronounce, actually. Uh, let me say, how about, uh, I don't think any of these are easy to pronounce. How about let's do, uh, actually, you know what, let's do uranium. Uranium's easy enough to pronounce. Uh, so anyway, let's do uranium. And uranium is actually going to be an exception, but let's figure out what exactly we could expect. If we were going to try to generalize a rule for our electron configurations for uranium, and let's actually use 
our nearest previous noble gas electron configuration that we learned about in the last video. And I'm actually also going to just put in my periods real quick. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And keep in mind that uranium is going to be in some space in here, some space in this block, in this 89 to 102 range. So what is the nearest previous noble gas to uranium? Well, it's going to be radon, right? So it's going to be one noble, one noble gas previous, right? So we can say that uranium is going to have the same noble gas configuration as, and we put it in brackets, as radon. And if we were going to generalize the, uh, the rule for figuring out what that electron configuration is, we start out with our 7s electrons, right? So first, we're going to say that we have got 7s electrons, and how many? We're going to have two of them, right? So 7s2. And then, what orbital are we in now? We're, we're in our, let me change colors. So we're in our f orbitals, and how many electrons, well, and first off, I guess we're in our f orbitals, and I think we should know this by now, When just like when we were in the d block, we backfilled one, uh, one uh, period number. Now that we're in the f block, we're actually going to backfill two period numbers. So this is going to be 5f. It's not going to be 7f. It's going, we're going to back, backfill these f orbitals two two levels instead of just one. So we could say that this is going to be our five level down here, and then this is going to be our four, we could say five F and four F right there. Sorry, hopefully hope hopefully you can read that. And then how many how many electrons would we expect to be in this five F orbital? Well we would expect four, right? Because we say that we have one electron here two electrons here, three electrons here, and then four electrons there. So we would expect, if we were able to generalize a, a rule, I guess, for doing these electron configurations in the F block, and, and we can generalize a rule, but there are a lot of exceptions, and, and I'll talk more about the exceptions in a second, but if we were going to generalize this rule, we would say that, you, that uranium's electron configuration was 7s2, 5f4. And this is if 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 uranium fit the rule. I, I, I shouldn't have chosen this example because uranium is actually th this is not uranium's electron configuration. Uranium is and is one of our exceptions. So I probably should have chosen a different one. But if we were I, I just want to show you that if we were going to generalize a rule for figuring out electron configurations, this is this would be the electron configuration for uranium. In actuality, let's just actually, because I don't want to mislead you, let me just go and this is the Wikipedia page, and I'm actually going to write down what the, the electron configuration is for uranium. So actually, we can see here, what can you see there? We've got our nearest noble gas, which is radon, and we've got our 5f electrons here. We've got our 5f shell, but we've only got three electrons in that 5f shell, right? In this configuration, in our configuration, if we were generalizing a rule, we would have four. So where does that extra electron go? Well, it goes into our 6d orbital. So this is kind of where, and we'll, we'll maybe take a look at this. Maybe we'll do one more video. Maybe I'll do one more video about uh, f-block electrons, uh, but um, we'll see that this is generally where those electrons go. They go into the d d block orbitals. So I'll actually write this. Let me just write this down right now. So we can say that if this was our rule, it is actually this is actually not what the actual electron configuration is for uranium. The actual electron configuration would be 7s2 6d1 and 5f3 and 
hopefully you understand you understood that basically what i'm trying to show you is that this is that uranium here is an exception that there's not really a clear rule for figuring out the uh the electron configurations for uranium like we have clear rules for figuring out electron configurations for you know everything in our p block and everything in our s block uh I've got a little bit more time in this video. Let me actually do one more that maybe will be a little bit less confusing. And I'm actually going to, let me just write in my periods again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm going to choose an element in the F block that I won't be able to pronounce, but, uh, or else actually, you know what, I will choose one that I will be able to pronounce. Let me choose Nobelium. Nobelium is not an exception. So Nobelium is going to follow, I guess, a rule that we'll be able to generalize about how, how these electron configurations are formed. So let's say that this is our, this is our 4F level. This is going to be our 5F level. And actually, you know what, I'm going to, sorry, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to write 4F over here. So maybe it's a little bit easier to read. Don't want to be writing over stuff too much. So let's let's do the configuration for nobelium. So nobelium and its electron configuration. What is, and remember, nobelium, just like uranium, is going to be somewhere in this space right here on the periodic table. So where what is going to be our nearest previous noble gas? Well, it's again, it's going to be radon. It's going to be radon, right? So if we just go back to the nearest previous noble gas, our nearest previous noble gas is going to be radon. And then the electrons that we add on, we're going to start off again adding on our 7s electrons. And again, we're going to have two of them. And then after that, we're going to start filling in our 5f, our 5f level electrons. And how many of those are we going to have? What we're going to have, this is, nobelium is all the way at the end of our, of our, of our f block, so we could count across, or else we, we know that this f block, and, and I, I shouldn't say that we, we know it definitely, because some f blocks on some periodic tables are printed a little bit differently, so you maybe it's it might be a good uh, exercise just to number or to count across the periodic table uh, count across your f block starting from a uh, uh, length lanthanum and actinum uh, and just make sure you get to fourteen because on some periodic tables these two elements are these two elements sometimes uh, uh, I can't pronounce these but anyway they are sometimes put here on the F block, and it's sometimes just done to uh, maybe give the periodic table a bit more unity, but really these two elements are D block elements. Let me actually, let me bring up the Wikipedia page because they do this the way they do it with, see here, this is how they, how some periodic tables are printed. These two LU and LR elements are sometimes printed in the F block, but maybe you can see that they are actually D block elements. The way that the way that the table is, is printed, it's a little ambiguous, but actually LU and LR are actually D block elements. So anyway, hopefully that didn't confuse you. But uh, anyway, we can number across and we can count across and figure out how many electrons we need in our 5F orbital. So we could say that 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we are actually going to need in our five F level or our five F shell uh, uh, electron orbitals. We are going to need fourteen electrons. And just to check, radon's radon has eighty six electrons. So radon has eighty six electrons in its configuration. How much is 86 plus 14 plus 2? Well, this would give us 86 plus 14. That would be 100. So this would be plus 2 would be 102. So we have 102 electrons. 
And is that how is that at Nobelium's atomic number? And we can see that yes, it is. So we've I guess that's our that's our check that we've we've done this right according to any type of rule we can generalize. I think I'm going to uh, end this video here. In the next video, I'm just going to point out where the exceptions are on on our f block, uh, just so just so I guess you can see which elements down here are going to be exceptions from any rule that we can generalize about uh, about how we would fill up these electron orbitals. So uh, anyway, I guess I will see you uh, in a future video. Thanks for watching.